Hello boys and welcome to lesson six on glaciation. Uh, again, this should take no more than 35 minutes and today we're looking at glaciers and maps. Well, that said, on the screen are some images from Ice Age 2, the meltdown. Has anyone seen this film? If you have, you may recall the story the animals have to escape from a wall of ice that is slowly melting and is about to release a torrent, a flood. And my question to begin with is, how true are the events depicted in this film? Well, this film is based on an actual event that happened around 200,000 years ago. Behind uh, a wall of ice in Canada, a huge pond of meltwater collected as temperatures rose. And eventually, a crack appeared in this ice wall which caused a massive flood through what is now the United States of America on a scale that we have never seen in human history. And so this event, this flood, this ice flow, this melt of ice did actually happen. But enough of the film Ice Age 2. Let's begin today's lesson by a quick recap. Can you name the following glacial landforms? Yep, this one is a corrie. Any guesses for this one? An arete. What about this lovely image? That's right, it's a pyramidal peak. How about this one? Several things here, a U-shaped valley with truncated spurs and possibly a ribbon lake at the very bottom of that valley. And this one, the last one, a lovely hanging valley with a river that enters the main trough via spectacular waterfall. I love that photo. It's impressive. It's in uh, Canada. Oh, go on, let's do one more. What's this feature? That's right, this is a drumlin created by deposition as material is dropped at the end of a glacier. So let's move on to today's lesson and we're thinking about glacial features and landforms and how we recognise them in our Ordnance Survey maps. Do you remember when we started school in September we looked at Ordnance Survey maps, we looked at symbols and how we read maps? Well today's lesson is reading maps to see if we can recognise features of glaciation. Now, here are a couple of examples of glacial features and how they are shown on the map. The map is to the right, and there's a picture of the feature on the left. A corrie is a bowl-shaped hollow, and look at the contour lines, the way they circle and loop around that corrie lake. At the top, there is this scar, this screech slope, which is the back wall of the corrie, very steep. A retz. These are the knife-shaped ridges, aren't they? Well, they're shown on the map by these lines with sort of squiggles on them. They're cliffs, they're steep. They show you these ridges between two bowl-shaped hollows. It 
it's possible to see the pyramid shaped mountain on that top image on the map. Look at the contour lines. They're almost triangular with that point spot height marking the top of the mountain. The glacial trough it's very flat at the bottom. The contour lines are very, very widely spaced out. But either side, the steep slopes are shown as very, very tight contour lines. Remember, contour lines show you places of height. And they're close together. And they show you this is a U-shaped valley. And here are some further features on maps, the U-shaped valley and the hanging valleys that are rivers that enter the main valley via waterfalls and a ribbon lake shown on the map. Look at the length of the lake, it's long and it's narrow uh, and it's at the bottom of a U-shaped trough. Now your teacher should have attached a link to a website which has got Ordnance Survey maps on them. I'd like you to click the link and I'll tell you what we need to do. This is what you should see when you open up the link. Well, not the Isle of Arran, although that's what I want you to try and zoom in on. Can you see it? If you find the city of Glasgow in Scotland, there is an island off the coast called the Isle of Arran. Can you try and find this on the website? Once you've found it, try and zoom in. See if you can get closer to the Isle of Arran. There's the tiny town of Brodick, where the boat arrives from Glasgow. Can you zoom in to this point here? As soon as you zoom in as close to this, then you have your Ordnance Survey map that you will probably recognise. Do you remember the quiz about features and forests and, and how they look on a map? And the symbols that we learnt way back in September and the grid and the grid reference. Well, when you zoom in on the website at, to this level, this is where you see the map that you recognise. Now, I have some questions on the next slide that I'd like you to have a go at. See how you get on with these questions. Question one is finding the height of Goat Fell, and there's a grid reference to help you. Question two is finding some of these features. You don't have to find them all. Maybe try and find a quarry, a glacial trough, perhaps even an arete. Try and find the physical feature, that grid reference. Try and find some map evidence about how humans use this area. And what evidence is there that you think the valley, at that grid reference, has been glaciated? Good luck with this. See how you get on. On the next slide are the answers, and I know it must be so tempting to have a look at them. Why don't you try and work them out first, and then we'll go through the answers together. And here are the answers. Again, you could pause this to check the answers. Um, I have picked a couple of features there, but to be honest, for question two, there were several features that you could have located. And you may have different good references. 
I've spelt the word picnic wrong, just to keep everyone on their toes, but that's an answer to question four, isn't it? Evidence of tourism, which I've also spelt wrong, sorry. But this has shown you how we can use maps to help recognize glacial features. I think this is quite a tough, challenging lesson, but I hope you've given it a go. Next lesson, we'll be having a look at how people use glaciated upland areas today.